Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl, Jasmine Ohin, and you already know, we're back for another video. Video. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here. Make sure that you like, comment. Comment if you like this red before you do anything else. Make sure that you subscribe, okay? Be a part of this growing sisterhood. So today, if you have already clicked this video, obviously you know that we're talking about um, how I survived an abusive relationship. So if I'm honest, this um, is not the easiest thing for me to talk about. Not because it's still hard emotionally, it's just a part of me that I'm exposing outside of my sphere and that makes me very vulnerable. So if you are here to empower and to encourage this sisterhood, then stay and watch the rest of this video. If you are a troll and wants to victim shame and do everything else, bye, I will block you. That simple. So um, just gonna, this is story time, okay? Now let me give you some context about my personality. Um, I find humor and really painful things. That's how I will usually cope with something before, you know, really going through that thing. I will like find laughter and I believe that's how I've gotten through a lot of things in life is just by finding joy in the middle of my pain, right? So there may be moments in this story where I'm like upbeat, but do understand the, um, the gravity of the thing I'm talking about. It's, it's not easy. And if you are watching this video, then you probably are curious about this story time, or you've been in an abusive relationship to some extent. And um, this could be triggering. So I just want to be very sensitive to the people that it may trigger. Um, you may know somebody that has been in an abusive relationship, and it's not the easiest thing. So I'm just laying out a little piece of myself to you guys. And um, just receive it you know it's not easy for me i'm human so you know just receive it however the holy spirit interprets it to you so i'm um, 16. i'm 16 and um at this point i only had one boyfriend in high school if i look back i would have had none right but my mom had a rule like you can only date when you're 16 and i mean i like begged her to date um my boyfriend before he was super sweet very nice guy um, but you know, when you're in high school or when I was younger, it was more of like a, I don't want a good guy. I want like a bad guy. You're way too nice. So I just treated him like trash. Basically the first boyfriend treated him not the best. And uh, we ended up breaking up. So then I am 16 and I start, you know, dating, but not like dating, like going to dinners, just, you know, going to parties, dancing, having a good time with my friends. And then I meet this guy and the way we met looking back was all sorts of janky. But, you know, I was like, I don't care. I'm, I'm single, single, ready to mingle. Eh. So at this point, I meet him at a party and from his actions at the party, I should have known that he was really slimy in, in, in the sense um, we're dancing together and he was asking me, do I want to go upstairs? And I'm like, what? Why? Wow, we're just dancing, you know? And so I tell him no. And then at the end of the party, he gets my number and then we proceed to talk. And on the phone, we would talk for hours. And he lived in Louisiana at this time in New Orleans. And I was living in Dallas, well, Garland with my mom and my sister. And um, we would talk on the phone for hours. I mean, like that kind of like cute cupcakey stuff, like, no, 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 don't get off the phone, don't hang up, don't go to sleep on the phone with me, right? I actually don't like stuff like that, but I was like, okay, I guess this is cute, you know? And we're on the phone every day, every day, every day. And then he lets me know that he's gonna move back to Texas. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. So actually before he moved, he was coming to visit. And at this point, I had only seen him once because I met him at a party and not in the best setting. So it was no way like cute. And when I saw him again, he came to see me at my mom's house. And uh, let me just give you context about myself. Um, I have always been a rule follower. You know, that don't mean that I won't snatch you up or nothing. But I have always been a person that like, 
wants to follow the rules like wants to and if I did not follow the rules I felt extremely bad I was the kid that would tell on themselves if I said a cuss word I would wash my own mouth out with soap like I was that girl right so I haven't done much you know me and my other boyfriend did some things we shouldn't have been doing but never anything like sex you know like you know, I'm waiting until I'm married. Don't really know why I'm waiting until I'm married, but it's like, I'm gonna just say that because that's what the Bible says. At that point, this is my mindset of my 16 year old self. And when I first meet him, he was very aggressive. Like out the gate, he was like grabbing on me and kissing me in my mouth. And I was like, whoa, like I was very taken back. So I like push him away. And um, he was very like dominant in how he would present himself. His presence could fill a room. He would make his presence very known. So I guess in a sense, I was also intimidated, but a little bit um, intrigued as well. Like if I'm being honest, a part of me was intrigued. Like how is he always commanding people and getting people to do whatever he wants? Like even me, I don't want to do this stuff. And he's like, you know, I'm doing that. I don't even know why. Like it's like he got inside of my head. So um, yeah, we, we um, he comes to visit and then we hang out for a little bit. After he leaves, I just feel like a little dirty. Like he was just touching on me way too much. And I don't even know him like that. Like, ew, you know? And then we still stay talking on the phone. So months go by, we start, we become boyfriend, girlfriend. And he started to show red flags, but nothing that I would ever have said at that time was abusive. Because my definition of abuse was physical harm but let me dispel that now if you are in a relationship and that person is not pushing you to be the best version of yourself the version of yourself that's closer to god the version of you that is more focused on your goals and they are pulling you away from your community the people that love you and have been walking with you through your life then that's some forms of abuse. Abuse doesn't only show up in physical harm. It also shows up in mental harm, emotional harm, sexual harm. And yeah, so at that point, I really didn't know I was, you know, in a really toxic relationship. Um, he would want to talk all the time, all the time. He would want to text all the time. If I couldn't call or text all the time, it would, it would result in an argument. And um, at this point, I was a huge people pleaser. So it was like, I just want to like stop arguing. Fine, I'll text you. Then the text would turn into, you have to text me at this specific time. And I'd be like in class. Like I'm in class, I'm a cheerleader. I'm very active in high school. And like, it became like a running joke. People would be like, oh, you have to go send that text message. Go call him and let him know you just left dance class. Like, but they didn't understand like how much anxiety I would have attached to it. Like, I just don't want to argue. So he became very aggressive with how he would speak to me. He would get angry. I would be these horrible names. And I don't consider myself a person that backs down easily. But in that relationship and in that point of my life, I was extremely um, vulnerable. I was very vulnerable. I just found out some really devastating news that in regards to my father. I really didn't tell anybody at all. So I was like taking that with me all through high school and just being really um, devastated with everything that was going on. You know, I'm in this relationship. I don't know, really know how to get out. Every time I try to get out, he like somehow has a video of me and like, like uh, changing my clothes, like something weird like that. Like I'd be thinking I'm just changing around my boyfriend. Like didn't think that was anything crazy. And, um, or he would have like these like blackmail, just things he would come up with, right? And a lot of it was lies looking back, like it actually, you know, I'm now 10 years removed from this relationship, but um, it was as much as those lies were lies, they did not feel like lies then, they felt like truths. And that's just how, you know, lies can feel we you know we agree with lies that the enemy says about us which is why we can feel like we're not worthy and we're not beautiful and we're not called but that's never what god says about us but we can feel like lies are truths in our own right so at this point we've been dating now for like six months we break up um this at this point i should have just been like done with him but he you know manipulates the whole situation has all his friends calling me i'm thinking it's so cute everybody in the school is calling me and um um <sighs> all right 
um, sorry. Well, I'm not sorry. Um, so like I said before, this is not, um, I'm usually super like, you know, goofy, you guys know, you come to my videos and stuff, but this video I was really um, apprehensive about sharing because it just peels back a part of me that um, if you're in my sphere, you know that I've been like in an abusive relationship before, but it's um, one thing to peel it back to people that could potentially see this that I don't know at all. And it makes me really vulnerable. But I know the part of my story that I am afraid to use or I'm nervous to use or don't want to use really. Um, that's the part of me that God needs. That's or that's the part that he wants to use because he doesn't need anything from me. Um, I need everything from him. And the part of my story that I'm reluctant to use, he's willing to use and he's willing to use it to give him glory. So I really pray that this video really glorifies him in a way that gives him honor and um, praise so you can really see his transformation power, his resurrecting power and redeeming power through this video. So um, honestly, I walked away because I was getting a little bit emotional and um, I may get a little teary eyed sometimes. And yeah, we're just going to work through it. We're going to work through it together. Like I said, I am not interested when I created this channel. I'm not interested in being fake and phony. Like this walk with God is has many ups and downs. And sometimes you have to go back on your past and reflect to see how far back he's brought you. And that's just what I'm doing now. It's just seeing how far God has really brought me. And that's gonna bring up some emotions. So I'm not a robot and um, I'm a very emotional person and I don't care. So um, yeah, so we're just gonna get back into the story. So I think I stopped at, um, where did I stop? Oh yeah, so we broke up and at this point we were six months into dating. And um, when we broke up, that would have been a really great time for me to step out of the relationship, honestly. It would have been a really good time for me to end it and be very confident in ending it. But the way that he was so persistent in getting me back, I honestly looked at it as it was so cute. He had people calling me whose numbers I didn't have. He had people texting me whose numbers I didn't have. And they were just like, take him back. He misses you. He's crying. He can't eat. He's in the restroom. He left class. All of this stuff, you know, and it was extremely manipulative. But at that time, I thought it was so sweet. I thought it was like the cutest thing that he was fighting to get me back. And so I took him back. And when I took him back this time, before, so I, I, I kind of break the relationship in parts. The first part of our relationship actually wasn't just like horrible. I mean, we would get into arguments pretty consistently. But at that time, I thought that was like what healthy love looked like. And we would make up all the time. And we would fight, we'd make up all the time. And um, he would just tell me he would get like that because he just wants me to be treated well. He wants people to... Um, you know, treat his woman well. He wants me to be seen a certain way. And I thought it was like him protecting me. So me calling him every time I had to come home, me texting him at specific times, me dressing a certain way was all really to make him feel comfortable, but it was making me less of who I was. And little by little, I lost like chunks of myself. And um, by the way, anytime you fall into a toxic relationship, it is going to chip away at you and God is going to redeem that part of you if you allow him, but it does have lasting effects. It can have lasting effects and those are things you're going to have to work through and heal from. And I'm just so thankful that Jesus is a healer and by his stripes we are healed and, you know, it's taken and it has and it's taking um, new levels of healing to really get through something that was um, so traumatic as this. So like I said earlier in the video, um, I never looked at an abusive relationship as 
mental, physical, emotional, and sexual. I just thought it was physical. So he, at this point, had never put his hands on me or anything. He was just really verbally abusive. Um, his tone was really crazy. He would say really insane things to me, call me the B word. I was the H word. Um, I was, when I didn't dress a certain way, so I didn't want to wear like my stomach out and booty shorts and high heels, but then it'd be like, oh, when you're with your friends, you dress like this, but when you're with me, you dress like a granny. You a dumb H. Like, oh, like, okay. But then I didn't want to fight, so I'd be like, okay, I'm fine. I'll put this on, it's no problem. So, and then he was, um, you know, emotionally abusive, like with just different things. So at that point, I never labeled it as toxic. I just thought that's what a relationship looked like. So the first six months were just consistent of that. A lot of toxic words, really poor communication habits, poor conflict resolution, really no peace at all in the relationship. Anytime we spent time together, it was never innocent. It was never pure. And I would come very green. And I was not sheltered at all. My mom actually spoke to us about sex starting at very young ages she talked to us about a lot of stuff so i was very exposed to hearing but not experiencing so i guess in that way i was sheltered um which i don't think is a bad thing i don't think you should be like experiencing all these things sexually to say you've done it um but i was so taken back by how abrasive someone could be on you sexually without your consent and without you wanting to do stuff but you know maybe um, getting mad at you because you don't want to kiss a certain way or you don't want to touch a certain way and doing extra things and then I would feel so bad I would just end up doing it and just feeling really miserable and dirty and nasty later and he was enjoyed he he enjoyed it he felt great but I felt disgusting so the first half of our relationship the first six months really kind of operated in that way all the time and when we were around his friends he would like become a different person like become like the kind of person where everyone thought he was so sweet. So in my mind, I would be like, this is not the guy that I was just hanging out with 30 minutes ago. He literally just cussed me out in the car. But then we get in front of everyone and he's like grabbing my hand. He's kissing me on the cheek. He's telling everybody how much he loves me, how beautiful I am, all of this stuff. And uh, it was really confusing for me, especially like at my age or at any age. And a, a toxic relationship can be very confusing. When you're in the thick of it, you don't actually see how bad it is until you're on the outside and you're looking from an objective view. And after that six months ended and we got back together after that like short breakup, um, I don't know what really was the turning point. I think it was just his true colors coming out it got like really bad. So the first time, one of the first times, I mean, he started to do it a lot, but one of the first memories I can remember of um, him really getting like physical with me, it was around like prom. And um, we were doing prom shopping and I was like really excited, you know, at this point to get my prom dress and just to have fun with my friends. And he was being very like, I don't want to do that for prom. I don't want to go to this hotel. I don't want to hang out with these people. I'm like, but these are my friends. Like, we also didn't go to the same school. So um, it was very, like, manipulative with that. Like, when you come to my school, you have to be a certain way. But when I go to your school, I'm not going to be a certain way. So he would get in my head a lot with that. Like, um, so prom came up and we were prom dress shopping. And I'm, it's me, him, and my mom. And my mom could definitely tell the relationship was very off. Like she could feel that something was not right. But I really changed during that year. I'm a vocal person. I love to speak. I love to communicate. I love to say how I feel and really work through things verbally. But for a year, I did not do that. I literally would be like in the worst fights crying myself to sleep, um, really in a dark space and would just not say anything about it. Like I just stopped talking, honestly, like literally I just stopped talking. And some of my friends, you know, at that time were very like, you guys are so cute. He's always posting you on Facebook. And I actually don't like stuff like that. So 
I said the moment I would actually be that way would be with somebody who I loved deeply and I wanted it to be my husband. Um, but he was not my husband and I didn't feel like we were really that deep. I just didn't know how to get out of it because I was so in it so deep and he was really had a hold on me. And so prom comes up and we're dress shopping. And um, when we're shopping for dresses and everything, I'm coming out of the dressing room and he's being really like in front of my mom telling me how much he loves the dress. So I'm feeling really good because I'm like, okay, he's being really nice. Good. I love this dress too. And it was a dress that just kind of like opened a little bit in the front. But you know how like dresses, like prom dresses are just going to be a little bit over the top, which I'm fine with. I love over the top. But when I was putting it on, it wasn't anything crazy. My mom is like, um, would not let me walk out the house with my like boobs out you know so I knew that it wasn't anything that was too crazy it just had like a little peephole in the middle so I felt comfortable in it I didn't feel like I was overly exposed it was a really long gown it was really pretty and um, on our way when we were walking out of the shop he starts my mom's walking ahead of us and he's like pulling my hand really hard telling me to slow down so I feel my joints coming out of my hand and I'm telling him to stop because it really hurts and he's like, you know, calling me all these names, mumbling under his breath, calling me a B word. And I'm trying to keep myself, my face composed because my mom, I don't want her freaking out. So um, he just goes on and on. He's like really gripping on my hand. And I just continue to feel my joints coming in and out of my, like from my wrist to my fingers. And I'm telling him to stop because I don't like that. And then we get in the car and he's like, oh, you know, you want to look so good. You're an H, you're a B. I knew I should have left you. And at that point, like he was really manipulative sexually as well. And I would tell him all the time, like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And um, I would do it. And then after I would do something with him, he would use that to be like, you know, I don't even want you anymore. I got what I needed. I got what I needed. You know, you're trash to me. You're dirt you're ugly kind of thing, you're fat. He would say all these horrible things. Um, I wish people could see you without makeup. I wish people could see what you look like without clothes on, you are such an ugly person. So he started saying that a lot, a lot, a lot, all the time. So at this point, he starts repeating that stuff to me back and forth and I'm just ignoring him. So I guess he got really angry because the way I was ignoring him, I was just not even giving him eye contact. He's on this side, I'm right here. And my mom is driving the car, but at this point he gets really angry and he grabs my arm. And when he grabs my arm, my entire arm came out of my socket and then like back into my shoulder. My shoulder rotating, rotator cuff, I guess. Um, but it, it popped out of socket, popped back in. And I'm like, you know, on the verge of tears and I'm like really trying to hold it in. And I'm like about to cry. And he just, his whole demeanor changes again. Like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? Like. I did not mean to do that. Like, I love you so much. Why can't you just listen to me? Like, I just want you to be your best self. I want you to see how beautiful you are. You don't need to look like that. You don't need to look be that way. And then in my head, I'm like, is this, what the heck? Like, I'm really freaked out. And at this point, I mentioned earlier, he was in New Orleans. He's from New Orleans and I lived in, in Garland in Texas and he um, was kind of jumping from house to house, like where to live. And he got kicked out of a few places. And at this point, um, he had nowhere to go, but he needed to finish school. And my mom, she says it all the time now, looking back, she wishes she never done it. But my family, we're like the kind of people where if we can serve your need, we don't mind. And at that point, I think really looking back for my mom, she already saw that I was slipping away so fast. It was a matter of either... I push her further away and I don't ever see my daughter again um, or I welcome him into our home and you know I'll get to be with my daughter and kind of monitor like what's going on and um, that's when it got really really bad so he moved in with us and you know my mom had it very clear where we would sleep in different rooms we would um, you know not be alone and all that stuff but uh, he didn't listen and I was like, you know, my mom said what she said and he'd be like, just don't tell her the truth. Now, my mom, I've never like would lie to my mom. I would always tell her stuff. Even if I did get in trouble, I would still tell her the full truth because I was like, it's better for me to tell her what's going on 
than for me to lie and then get in trouble. So I would tell her the truth all the time, but at this point I started lying a lot. So I started lying about um, if he came, like he would come into my room and sleep at night and do like try to do things with me or do things with me that I didn't want to. Um, and then he started to get really like physical in the house and like sometimes glass would be breaking because he'd be pushing me so hard and I would be like falling over and like falling into like glass and stuff. And my mom would run upstairs and she could tell in my eyes, I was like terrified. And she, I would just run out and I was like, mommy, like he's hitting me. Like I said that one time out loud. And then he was like, he immediately cut me off and was like, oh, Jasmine's just frustrated. Like right now, sometimes she gets so frustrated. And he was such a charmer. Like he could charm his way out of anything. Like I had seen it so many times. Like he would charm people out of like houses and items and clothes and money. Like he could charm his way out of anything. So at this point, we're like creeping up on about to make a year and our relationship is just getting progressively worse. Like the abuse is getting worse. It's getting more toxic. It's starting to be really like volatile on both ends because I stopped. I started to deciding for myself, you're not going to hit me anymore. I'm going to start fighting you back. So I started hitting him back. I start punching him back, um, pushing him, hitting him with belts and all this stuff. But he would use his like strength and like his ability to like pick things up and like hurt me. So he would usually, well, he always won when it came to like physical harm and every part of the relationship, he would end up being like victorious, I guess, but really not because the Lord was on my side and I really just see how much God's hand was on it. So fast forward, um, a ton of horrible events like between this time from prom to sexual abuse to physical abuse. I ended up in the hospital. Um, just really not great, right? And I ended up in the hospital from sexual abuse from him though, and not physical abuse. Um, and after, you know, we're creeping up on our year anniversary and um, he went back to New Orleans for some time. And I was telling myself, I don't know what it was. I honestly think it's just, was God's reckless love. I don't know what shifted, but something in me immediately snapped and was like, you do not deserve this. He talks to you crazy. He, spe he speaks to other people that you care about crazy. He touches you in really horrible ways. He does things to you you don't want to be done to you. He doesn't listen to you. You tell him to stop. He doesn't stop. You say no, he doesn't care. You're literally his like sex slave. And then on top of that, he's abusive there. And then he's also abusive to you physically and verbally. You're like in prison. What is wrong with you? And it was like out of nowhere, he was gone for two weeks. And I just like looked in the mirror one day. And at this point, it got so bad where I wasn't even looking in the mirror anymore. Like I didn't even want to face the person who I had become. I felt like the person who I had become became so numb and so raw, like the parts of him that I absolutely despised were becoming parts of me. The way I would speak to him, the way I would get angry and have to retaliate and fight back the same way he did, that became who I was as well. And it was horrible, horrible. And through that, he was gone for two weeks and I'm at home and I started to have fun. I started to laugh again. I started to um, actually sit and talk to my mom and have dinner with her. He was extremely jealous of the relationship I had with my mom. And um, really we were like just growing further and further apart. My mom wasn't going anywhere from me. I was just growing further away from her. And my mom was just so patient. I really think that God's grace and his love was manifested inside of my mom after me. Like, I don't know how she didn't put me out. I was so disrespectful. I say sorry to her like randomly sometimes because I'm like, I was so angry and so disrespectful. And she's like, I knew it wasn't you, but I mean, I would have put me out. I was like, I'm running away. Like I was just horrible. And my mom also knew that there were things that I found out that summer about my dad. And I'll save that for another video because that's extremely 
you know, a lot of information in one video. But I found out some things about my dad that summer beforehand that were devastating. They were extremely devastating, not just for me, but my siblings and my extended family. So I was dealing with a lot and my mom knew that, you know, it's not just her. Like she's literally just under a lot of pressure. And I feel like I had nobody to talk to because I, did, I wasn't speaking, you know, I wasn't saying anything. My mom didn't even know that all that abuse was happening until after the relationship. So when he's gone, I'm just enjoying my sister. She was home for the summer from college. Um, my brother was in Afghanistan in the army. So we would like talk to him on the phone. And I was just like out with my friends, not caring. I stopped, I stopped answering his text messages right away. Um, he would be like double, triple texting me, quadruple texting me. And I was like, you know, I'm living my best life. I was going out to eat, just doing regular stuff. But it started to become so foreign to me that when I got to do it, I was like, wow, I forgot about this, you know? And I forgot how much I enjoyed life. I enjoy laughing. I enjoy making jokes. I forgot this part of me. And um, he came back. So when he came back, he came back to my mom's house. And um, he was really like irate, but also very like, okay, so we gonna get it on kind of thing. And I told him, we're not doing that anymore. Like, we're not going to be intimate anymore. I'm waiting for my husband. And I, like, flat out told him, and I don't think it's you. Um, and at this point, I don't even know why we were still together. It was just, we were just coexisting kind of thing. So he got really mad. Um, well, initially, he was like, okay, cool. And I was, I thought, wow, that was super easy. That's never been that easy. So I was really, like, happy. Like, that was it. But then he got really, really mad when he came back from running errands or something. And he came back with um, a condom and was expecting for us to be intimate. And I was telling, or I don't want to say intimate because intimacy is not just sex. He was expecting for us to have sex because intimacy goes beyond sex. So let me say that I did not experience intimacy with him. He was expecting for us to have sex. And I told him no. So there were a lot of like details that led up to this night um, of how angry he got, but basically he ended up pulling a knife out on me and he was like holding the knife at my stomach. And I just remember being the most afraid I've ever been in my life. Like it felt like a golf ball was in my throat. I couldn't speak. Um, my, bro my sister and my mom were upstairs. We just moved into this new neighborhood was really nice and uh, we didn't grow up with a lot of money. So it was like, wow, we've made it kind of thing. And I just kept thinking, my brother's in Afghanistan. Um, he doesn't mind hurting me ever. And tonight I'm, he's gotten angry, but never this angry where he pulls a weapon out on me, but he pulls a knife out on me. If he's willing to kill me and he says he loves me, then he's certainly gonna kill my mom and my sister. I was willing to just, at this point die honestly it was like I don't really have a great life um I'm not really worth anything I don't see myself as much he doesn't see me as much clearly he's willing to like put this knife to my stomach and the only thing that I could remember was my mom would always say when you don't know what to do just pray and um I just started praying out loud like the knife is literally the tip of it's at my stomach I am just out loud, just saying things to God, nothing eloquent. I don't even remember what I said, but it was like immediately the presence of God just like covered me and he dropped the knife and I swear his eyes were like so red. And in that moment, his eyes like went like white and he was just crying and he was like, you know, you know, turned it on himself, you know, I can't believe that I did this. I'm such a horrible person. So I'm consoling him and also very afraid because the knife is still out. And, um, you know, I'm just like basically thinking of my, to myself, say what you have to say in order to go to sleep tonight. And then you're done with this relationship, Jasmine, like you're done with this. And I wake up the next morning, he throws some clothes at my face. He's really angry. And he's like, so are we together or what? And I'm like, no, we're not together. 
And at this point, and nobody's in my house right now. Everybody, my mom was at work. My sister was going to do some errands before we went to do another errand later, just her and I. And we had nothing in the house. Like I said, we just moved there. So I went into the restroom because I'm trying to get away from him. And I went into the restroom and, um, crazy piece. I went into the restroom to hide. Basically, I was, I was still scared. I'm very shaken up from the night before because... No one's ever pulled a weapon out on me to hurt me, ever. And I just had one to my stomach from somebody who claims to love me more to the ends of the earth, but is always hurting me and doesn't mind hurting me. And uh, I'm in the restroom and I'm hiding and I'm really just trying to, you know, just stay away from him and hoping that my sister comes home really quickly. And um, he gets he gets to the bathroom door and he's knocking really hard and he's like saying stuff like, you know, I have something in there. I need to get in there. I need to get in there. And I'm like, you don't have anything in here. It's, we just moved in here. There's nothing in here for you. So he like picked the lock and the night before he like kind of like was about to ram the knife into my stomach. He had the knife behind his back like this. And then he like came around the corner and like had it on my stomach. Like, you know what I could do to you? Like that kind of stuff, like threatening me and everything and um so when he was picking the lock to the restroom he had the same action that he used the night before he was coming in with that same action into the restroom so the first thing i'm gonna think about is oh my gosh he has the knife again and he like just rushes into the restroom and just like hits me dead in the stomach so i'm thinking that it's the knife so i just belch out screaming and then i look down and i like look at him I'm like what? and then he's just hysterically laughing like he's laughing so hard and at that moment I knew like I knew the night before was bad but in that moment in particular I was like he does not care like he will literally kill me and not care and he will lie until the ends of the earth that he didn't do anything he cared about me because that was the him he was presenting in front of people but the him that i knew and the him that i was experiencing was horrible was like detrimental to my health and my in my faith at that time i was just like god like where are you you know but that's how we are as people we put ourselves into situations or we stumble into stuff and we're like god why'd you allow this um god why are you doing this but after I left that relationship, I told my sister immediately as soon as she got home and the way she reacted was like, I should have been telling people all along. Like my sister was like, no, nah, forget that. Like we got all of his stuff. We took him, dropped him off somewhere. And um, yeah, and then I was pretty much done with that relationship. And, and I remember a lot of people were saying to me, you know, just be careful because when you are in a in an abusive relationship you have the propensity to want to go back because that's what you're used to and I kept saying that won't be my story that won't be my story so sometimes he would call and text me and at this point we're about like uh it's like months have gone by we hadn't said anything I gave him his stuff back I was just done with him right I'm on to college um but when I moved to Houston I was getting really like you know new adapted to this new area and he called text randomly and it was like maybe two weeks went by. We were like just talking on a regular basis. And that behavior started to come back up again. And that moment, I was like, you are not doing this again. No. And I just straight cold, dead at the whole thing. And we never have spoken since, hadn't seen each other. And I'm fine with that. And I wish him well and bless him. However, the Lord sees fit to bless his life. And through all of that, I cannot deny how much God was pursuing me. I actually, there are moments when I'm in worship by myself and I just break down crying, not because I'm sad, but because I am just so amazed with the grace and the favor that has been on my life. I should have been dead. I should not be able to have children as, um, as, as much abuse that I face sexually with this one person I should not be able to I shouldn't even be married you know like I remember one of the things and I'll say this in another video because it's, I mean this 
Um, and I gave you guys a very like quick rundown kind of thing, quick, not so quick kind of thing. But um, this had had very lasting effects on me when I was dating. And the way that I really hated the way I was treated, I began to treat my boyfriend, now my husband, that way. And um, I really began to make him pay for the things he never did to me. And I remember one of the things right before we got married, I, I was like, I could not, we were in premarital counseling. And they were like, let this man love you. Like he wants to love you, he wants to marry you. And I just remember crying so hard, shaking my head, like, you don't want to love me. Like, you don't want to love me. I'm like, I have been through too much. I've done too much. Like, if, and I, and it's not like he didn't know stuff. I told him stories, but to spend my forever life on earth, to die with this person, to like create a family with this person, you know everything I've done and you still want to marry me. And I remember he grabbed my hands in counseling and he just like turned to me and he was like, let me love you. I love you. I see you. You have not done too much. You are worthy. And I just like couldn't take it. I was just like crying, like bawling crying. And I honestly just look back at that and I'm like, wow, God, like, even in the middle of my brokenness, you still like had a story for me. And marriage is not the pinnacle of success. So please do not confuse that. I'm just saying like for me, that was something God was calling me to was to be a wife and at a young age and not too far after a trauma, you know, it wasn't like a ton of time went by at this point. It was like a few years, but I was still very fresh with a lot of my wounds. This is before I really got tools and help and trauma therapy to really deal with a lot of the stuff that I did go through. And you can't deny like when you're in something bad. And like I said earlier, the worst part of your story that you don't want to tell is the part that God wants to use. The part of you that you wanna hide is the part that God wants people to see because when they see that, they see him. Because everything that I've been through, um, this is one of the many like traumatic things that had happened to me growing up. And nobody sees that when they see me. They just see joy. They see like this beautiful, happy girl just like living her best life, jovial, her smile filling up a room. But they don't know how much it cost. They don't know how many nights I would be praying, how many nights I'd be crying, how many nights... I wanted to die, like literally just wanted to die, not even kill myself, just like God, can can I just die? Can you please just take me away already? Like I'm not even worthy. I don't even know why I keep saying this good God, this good father. I just felt like I was not worthy of love. And for somebody that's watching this and somebody that feels like they are not worthy of love, they feel like they're unworthy to be seen, they feel like they're unworthy to be called, you feel like you've done too much, you feel like you hurt too many people along the way while you were hurting. You feel like God can't use you. That is a lie. God can use you and he wants to use you. You have to let him use you. You have to let him use your pain. Out of my pain has really come purpose. I don't say that to just like say a Christian cliche. It is true. Out of my like darkest years has come purpose. Out of my pain, I've been able to minister and speak to so many women and men and help them walk through their journey with Christ. And that is not, I don't even know why God has chosen me. I truly don't know. I say to God all the time, I am not worthy of what you're doing through me. But God does not care about how I see myself. He, let me rephrase that. God does not want me to see myself through the lens of my eyes. He sees me through the lens of his son. He sees me through the me that he created. And he does not care what I feel like. I have to remember truths. And the truth is God is good. The truth is whenever I um, was on the edge of just giving up and just letting that be my story, God like woke some fire up inside of me and had me look in the mirror that I have not I hadn't looked in in months 
truly looked at myself and asked me the question, why? Why are you still in this? I'm calling you out of this. You've got to get out of this. And it was either that I was going to accept it or I wasn't. And I'm just so thankful that I did because out of it, I have a life I couldn't even have dreamed of. I have a life that I didn't even know was possible for me, possible for somebody like me. I say that for you to know and to believe that God really cares about you. Um, I walked away earlier in the video because I was starting to get really emotional and I was starting to cry. And uh, uh, I wish I would have stayed here and did that, but then I think it's good that I walked away because I went to say to my husband, I don't think I can tell this part of my story. And he said, it's okay to recharge. Go in the closet, you know what to do. <laughs> and I like just went and I retreated and I started crying to God and saying, God, I'm thankful for how far you've brought me, but this is not easy. If you want me to share this part of my story, you have to give me courage. And I called my sister and I told her, um, that I was just feeling really vulnerable and I don't feel like I want to expose that part of myself. And she said, God will give you the courage. God will give you the courage. And honestly, when I went to both of them, I kind of wanted them to say, um, because I trust their voices in my life and I wanted them to say, you know, okay, don't, you don't have to. But you know, they hear from God and God is like, no, that's the part of your story I want to use. So use that part of your story don't hide it it is not meant to be hidden it is meant to be exposed so people can see that he does take broken pieces and makes it a masterpiece he takes your filthy rags and gives you new clothes it is not just a feeling god is to be experienced and when i look back on every part of my life i see that he has kept me kept his love you know when i was in a relationship when a person only wanted to harm me and everything that the devil meant for bad, God has turned into good and he has used everything to glorify himself. The things that I caused, the things that I stepped into, the things that I blamed him for, he redeemed me, he's forgiven me and he's given me a story and a platform to speak on those things. So for you, do not give up. Keep walking, keep walking it out. It is not easy but you can't do it. I could not leave that relationship in my own strength. I could not do it alone. It was the moment that I said, God, you got to step in because I don't know what to do. Clearly you're not here. I need your help. Um, you're not, your hand is not on this relationship. I need your help to have the strength to leave. And then I also told my community, I finally opened my mouth and said something to my sister to my mom, to my brother, to my best friends at that time and just let them know what I'm going through. And honestly, if I would not have done that, I would not have been held accountable of going back because it would have just looked like, oh, you guys always do that back and forth. But they would not have understood that my life was really on the line. So I'm blessing you. I don't even know if I'll post this, honestly, because um, I feel like I'm talking in circles. And I feel like it doesn't really make any sense, but um, I may just post it for that reason because I think that is a lie from the enemy. And I just immediately am going to shut that up right now because if it was I was talking in circles, the Holy Spirit will interpret it to somebody the way that they need to hear it. So if I am speaking in circles and I'm not making sense, it doesn't matter. God is going to use my part of my story that don't make any sense. It's going to make sense to somebody. So I want you to know that um, you're beautiful. And I don't say that just like to be cute. You are beautiful. You are really beautiful. You don't believe it. You don't feel it. Look at yourself. Look what the word says about you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. You are victorious. Your story does not have to stop here. Your story does not have to be in a relationship with somebody who is not seeing your worth. Your story does not have to be that you are even in a relationship. Don't put your worth in people, put your worth in God. Don't pursue things, don't pursue people, don't pursue a man. Men are always gonna be there. Worry about yourself, worry about your, your mind, your body, it is your body. You don't have to give somebody access to your body. God has given you that. He wants you to steward over yourself. He wants you to steward over the gifts he's given you. 
hand it back over to him. Hand it back over to him and allow him to do a great work inside of you. Um, that's all I got. I mean, there's obviously a lot more I would say about this and um, but I'm creeping up on 40 minutes and I still have to edit and everything. So I think I'm just going to end it here. But I love you. I want to pray for you. I really want to pray that strongholds will be break it, broken and you would no longer allow the enemy to have a foothold in your life and to keep you bound in lies. Father God, thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for being the kind of father that doesn't give up, that continues to press in, that continues to walk with us, that continues to redeem every mistake. Lord, you are a supernatural father, the kind of father that we could not have even created on earth. And God, we're thankful for the access that we get to you every day, every moment. When we don't know what to do, you're there. When we're confident about the thing you're telling us to do, you're there. You're there all the time and we're thankful for that. Father, right now, by the blood of Jesus, I break every stronghold that is holding on to your daughter, every stronghold that is telling her that she's not enough, every foothold in her life, the lies of the enemy, I rebuke them by the name of Jesus, God, that they have to be gone. I send the enemy notice that he cannot have a hold on your daughter. He can have a hold on her with depression, with abuse, God, with manipulation, with addictions. Lord, loose Loose joy, loose your spirit, loose things that you have put into motion. Remind your daughter in this moment that she's seen, that she's loved, that she's valuable. God, like rubies, she's more valuable than rubies. She's more valuable than the most expensive car. A man can't buy her. A job can't buy her. People cannot speak into her life the way that you can, Father. Open her mind where it's been shut. God, give her community that speaks life into her, that calls her beautiful, that says she's fearfully and wonderfully made. Because, Father, that would be one more example of your grace manifesting in her life. And let her look back on her past, God. May your hands just stretch forth to her that she looks back and sees that your fingerprint was always there, that your arms are there saying, come, receive this love receive this overflow, receive this hug. You haven't been loved. You haven't been allowing me to love you and let me love you well. So Father, I bless your daughter with that. Lifting us up, we give ourselves back to you, Lord, because we're only here stewarding what you've already given us and we give it all back to you that you can do more in your hands than we can do in ours. So multiply the promises from our pain multiplied purpose from the pain we've walked through. It was never in vain. It was never your intention. But we give it back to you, Lord, because you're going to do more with it than what we can do. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. Um, woo, this was a long video. If you stayed until the end, I love you. I really love you for real because I got those watch minutes. No, <laughs> no I love you guys. Um, this was a long video, but very needed. I love you, sis. I will see you next Monday.